What's up everybody, a spare with a gun here from Sleepless Nights with another episode on the Space Engineers Inspiration series. We're starting things off today with the USS Nevada. Now obviously this is kind of an Enterprise Star Trek-esque design, however, um, it, I do believe it's a, a unique ship. I don't think it's something that was um, copied. Some, some builders will copy stuff, some people will do original ones. I, I think this is an original. Um, it was said to be done in the theme design of like the Discovery style, um, which I can kind of see from, where is it, the under, the radar dish or deflector array or whatever it's called down here, reminds me of kind of, well actually the dish in general kind of reminds me of the uh, Shinjo? I think, from the Discovery? I think that's the name of it. Uh, either way, really cool ship design. I really like the idea. Um, again, there's a lot of like detail stuff which you guys know that I, I really gravitate towards. Um, I don't know if this what this is really for or if it's just decorative, but I really like this little groove in here with the... seems like there's a light underneath it or something. Um, that's a really cool idea. It looks like there is a bridge area right here, which is cool. And see, th see, see, that the, the things are, the things are right side up this time. I wasn't honestly sure <laughs> with this build because of the design, uh, considering that I believe it's the Shenjo that has the bridge on the bottom. So when I recognized the design, I was kind of concerned that maybe I did have it upside down, but I think it's right side up. Pretty sure. Um, I do like the nacelle idea too here. The the design is kind of interesting. It's a neat way to tackle the nacelle idea, which is essentially leaving it hollow and cranking up the light, it looks like. Because um, that's just one interior light. It's not even a spotlight or anything. Um, yet, from a distance, it really does give that red uh, bubble on the nacelle kind of idea. So that's pretty cool. The blinking, I don't know if that's on purpose or if that's that lighting glitch from the, the base game. I'm, I'm thinking it's the lighting glitch, so bear that in mind. Um, I need to find a door. That would be useful. There's a hangar door off the back. We've got thrusters on the back here. Um, oh, that's interesting. They used um, corner lights along the edge. I wasn't sure how they were getting that because I didn't see any lights on the edge of the actual armor plating. That's pretty cool. Alright, so if we can't find a... there should be some kind of boarding door or something, but if there isn't one or I can't find it, which is the ladder's more likely, we'll just go in through the hangar if we can. Um, but yeah, this one does have uh, some semblance of an interior. Some of these Enterprise type ships are basically small ship designs that then... Um, well, that's a interesting spot to hide a button panel. However, these don't have buttons attached or to do anything for it. I don't see a control panel, so we might have to just manually open this door, I think. That's what we'll do. Wait a minute. Do we not have... Oh, we don't have gravity out here. Uh, get a hold of that. Let's do... Let's just grab all these, open them up. This is probably an exterior, uh, interior controlled only kind of thing, I imagine. Or it's controlled. Oh, uh, there it is. That looks like the. Hmm. Well, there's the panels. But I'm not seeing any buttons. Oh well. We'll do it manually. Again, half the time when I'm doing these showcases and stuff, I don't even know if I'm. Uh, operating the ship correctly, so I very, I'm very hesitant to say something's missing because most of the time I just don't see it. I've just missed it. Um, looks like we have a jump drive, or is that a battery? That might be a jump drive. Ah, I was right. Ah, so there. Um, all right, so we got a walkway here. And actually, this is super appropriate because the passageways have always looked kind of Star Wars, Star Trek-y to me anyway. So I, I think that's kind of cool using that in one of these types of builds. We have uh, glass over a walkway down there. I wonder how we get in there. Alright, so this is a hallway area, looks like. Where's this go? Oh, there's our 
passageway things. So there's one up there. And, oh, there's actually a couple more floors. Wow. They managed to get quite an interior in here, to be honest. I didn't think it would be this expanded. Okay, so I'm guessing... Oh. <laughs> I totally knew this was here. I just wanted to see if you guys caught it. Um, but yeah, so this looks like it's going to lead up to the main bridge area. So that's cool. Uh, we'll wait and try and fly it around in a moment. This is surprising to me, actually, that this comes back down. I didn't expect that. That's kind of cool, though. Um, all right, so we have cryo chambers, medical bays, and then we go down another floor. Where's this lead us to? We went down only to go back up. Uh, maybe an engineering and maintenance type area where all of our gyroscopes are located. Not engineering, I guess. Could could label it like flight control, I suppose, since it's gyroscope related. Um, okay, so this leads to the passageway, or the turbo lift, if you want to be proper about it. Um, this leads back to the reactor area, or, <clears throat> excuse me, warp core, that's what I meant to say. The engineering room in the warp core area. Um, and then this ties into the passageway area. And then this goes down to the bottom floor, which is the, um, I guess, antenna and communications bay? Seems like an awfully big room to just have an antenna. But, you know, there's that. <laughs> uh, where does this tie into? I don't know. Oh, this was the main room. This was the first one we came on, came in from. Okay. Oh, there's a side door here. Where's this go? This place just, this build just keeps surprising me with all the different hallways. Okay, so we have oxygen storage and generation. I'm not really sure why the solar farm's down here, or oxygen farm's down here, but whatever. Crew quarters, maybe? Oh, thank goodness. I was like, is this really a crew car? I didn't know if the window was going to actually be there or not. This is actually a really cool... Um, if this is a crew quarters, this would actually be a really cool place. It could be... See, th since it's a discovery theme, though... I don't know if this is... I say that because typically a lot of people use the passageways as makeshift beds. Um... But I'm not sure, being the discovery style, if it's more of a brig or not. I can't quite tell. Or if it's just a hallway. It kind of almost looks like just a hallway. And sometimes these builds have... Um, I, I didn't ex actually see this in the description, but I've seen in quite a few of them that mention the interiors being a little bit less... Um, Eh, defined, detailed, something along those lines, because it's basically open for uh, people who download it to, to do what they want with it. So sometimes it's not always that it's not finished or that they didn't have ideas. This wasn't labeled as a work in progress, so if it is, um, that's, you know, I, I was unaware of that. Um, a, lot of, a lot of times it'll be labeled as a work in progress. Um, but so I'm guessing that some of these interior areas are left um, a little more empty on purpose. Oh, okay. So now we come back out to where we are. Okay. Ooh, what goes over here? Oh, this is the other side of where we started from. Okay. Okay. I think I have an idea of where I am now. So if we go up, if we go up, we'll be at the bridge. Aha! Okay, that works. All right, so let's take her for a spin. We obviously have our <clears throat> torpedo base and the jump drive. I don't see any other hotbar controls. So let's go ahead and take it for a test flight. Turning's not too bad. Again, these kinds of the ships weren't the shuttles in the fighter style, so it's kind of crazy to expect them to turn on a dime. 
but it moves pretty good. Speed's pretty decent. And then if we fire our torpedoes, apparently I'm moving at an angle. Looks like we have the four torpedo bays in the front, along with multiple phaser banks <clears throat> on the, the top and probably the bottom. I can't really see it very well. Yep, there's stuff on the bottom. So, yeah, overall, I approve. I really like it. So with that, let's wrap this one up and move on to the next one. All right, so next up we have what is probably one of the smallest and simplest ideas that I've probably ever featured on my channel. I mean, on the, on the Space Engineers Inspiration series, and that is the solar buggy. Now, at first glance, it might be like, why is this on here? Especially when there was such, uh, there was actually quite a few things that I had to pick from this week. Um, not, not one that shouldn't be mentioned. That's not how that's supposed to come out. <laughs> one of the biggest ones that I had a uh, question mark on whether I was going to feature was the, um, it was one of the, it was the tank. I forget the name of it. It was something like the, um, Barracuda or Behemoth or something. I think it started with a B. Anyways, it was a, it was a big battle tank thing. It looked really cool. And so it was kind of one of those, I thought about featuring that, but I just couldn't help but feature this one because it's not modded. And I know that sounds weird at first, but it's true. It's, it's that there's no fancy schmancy mods that made cool blocks or anything like that. This was just some cr good old fashioned creativity and I was dying to see how it works and how somebody figured out how to do this because it is a buggy, obviously. You know, we've got the little passenger seat there. Um, actually, hold up. It's even got a little platform. Well, how cool is that? Oh, I still have my jetpack on. <laughs> well, how cool is that? So I'm guessing this is just a passenger seat. That's interesting. So you can get in that way, which is cool. Um, it's kind of got more of a rover look than a buggy, to be honest. But it even has a little turret on the back for self-defense. Ooh, what is this? We got some screens on the back. Oh! You can turn it on from there. You don't even have to be in the in the thing. Okay, that's awesome. So it unfold the whole thing unfolds into a solar array, which is just so freaking cool. Now, what I'd really like to do is combine this kind of idea and couple it with some kind of script that would auto detect and find the best angle to have the solar panels at because you can actually adjust it. It's not just straight up. Um, so this was a bit more of a function inspiration than more of a form, although the form is pretty darn cool. I like it. It works really well. <gasps> Never mind. It's doing it automatically. Hold up. What? What? I'm glad I was taking my time. I didn't realize it would do this on its own. Now, does it just go to a set angle or does it actually find the angle? I mean, in theory, it shouldn't actually be too difficult to find the angle, you would just have it kind of whatever gives it the best ang uh, solar angle and then it would just stop. Now it has all four, so let's see what it does. It... Huh. I'm also equally parts puzzled about how it's figuring out how, it, how to do this, too. Okay. Okay. Interesting. That's really so cool! Now it does look like it stopped moving for now, so I'm thinking it found what it wanted to, to find. So, this part is interesting to me too, how they have all of this set up and it's all connected. So, this is something I could reverse engineer for quite a while to figure out exactly how everything functions. Um, so we have the one rotor there, obviously, for the up and down. It looks like it's still spinning. I wonder 
if it's just marginally adjusting every little bit or not. Anyways, so this is the up and down rotor. Um, this is going to be... How did they pull that off? Is that using a displacement, I guess? So we have four pistons with a light block frame, half blocks on the bottom edge of a standard block with a rotor. Maybe they just have it displaced high enough up that it doesn't actually interfere. So that's kind of cool. So we have one for horizontal, one for vertical, and then these array thing, or this array of rotors is basically controlling the unfolding and folding up process. But I thought that was really cool too, because when they're folded, what is it using, half blocks? It is using half blocks, holy crap. So when it folds back up, it looks really like, I don't know how to put this, but it doesn't look big and bulky like you would expect having just frames on the back of it type of thing. Like, I'm, I'm fully going to own up to this. I'm totally stealing this for my Let's Play type, my survival series. I'm, I'm not sure I'll use the actual buggy, but like this part on up, totally doing that. That is awesome. So, uh, let's see. So we have the pistons, we have the connector on the back, and we have the programmable for auto... Oh, that's auto LCD, so that's going to be the M Masters script. Okay, so what I'm curious about... Oop, I moved. I shouldn't do that. So what I'm curious about is there has to be a programmable block here for... Uh, yep, here we go. Okay, so there is a script running it. Alright, cool. So that might be something that... Okay, so this is the M Master one. Ooh, that's a cool little loading loading icon. Oh no, this isn't M Masters. This is the alignment script. I think. I'm confused. Configuration. Yeah, so this is the alignment script. Oh wow, that's cool. That's pretty neat. So that's a bit more of a programming situation. So I don't think I'm going to mess with that on this one. I might look at it a little closer for something like the uh, Programming 102 series or something like that to see if we can replicate something similar. I mean, obviously you don't want to like steal somebody's idea, but the formulas and calculations and stuff are kind of more just math and equations. And then what you do with them is a bit more of the, you know, is there... Now, how I retract them though? I hope that makes sense. What I was just saying. That's the auto LCD. So I have to get out again, I guess. Because this button on the back... That is one of the coolest parts. Like, honestly, the alignment script is cool, but this folding up sequence is just awesome. Like, it, that's what I think I was trying to get at. With the half blocks, everything looks really... Um, like smooth and set up properly kind of thing. It's not like you got this big bulky, you got the cool edges on the side. That, I, that's, yeah, yeah, like, I totally want to rip that off now. <laughs> like, that's so cool. I know, it's just a solar panel buggy, but that is so neat to me. Like, I can, I can imagine it again. That's so cool. I hope everybody else finds it as interesting as I do, because I love solar panel stuff, and I love the collapsible idea. Like, that's just awesome. I haven't even driven the buggy around, right? Like, I'm just... So I'm guessing once that happens, then the alignment script actually kicks in. It's, it's probably how that works. And then it's more than likely controlling the rotors based on the input that the solar panels are getting from the sun is what I well, that's what I'm getting anyway from this so let's see if I can interrupt it will it break no it doesn't seem like it actually broke well oh no, there it goes I was gonna say they're not folding up that is so freaking cool I was wondering if you could pull that off, though, because I tried to do that a long time ago with mine uh, in my 101 series of doing a based-on-input control the 
the solar panels. However, I think when I did mine, it was only horizontal. I never got to the vertical step. But the, the principle is sound. It's just if it makes more power in this direction, move to it. If it makes less, move back to the old one. You know, that kind of stuff. I don't know how the script is doing it. I didn't want to dissect it in this series here. But the idea makes sense to me. Unless there's a sensor or something else, some other way of doing it on board the ship somewhere. But um, do I have the parking brake on? I can't tell. I'm not really going anywhere. Oh, yep, parking brake. No, that's power. Where's that park? No, that's parking brake. I don't know how to. I don't know how to control things, and it actually moves really well. Like, um, you guys know I don't really have usually good luck with, uh, ground vehicles, though they have updated the game quite a bit with ground, in, in regard to ground vehicles. Um, but yeah, this is, like, a cool little buggy. Like, I, I think it's awesome, especially for something like a survival series. You could have this as your explorer vehicle, since it can always charge itself, and then you could dock it to your base when you're not out and about and let it charge your base really really cool idea it's not the usual fanfare i typically do for inspiration series but like i said it's a bit more of a function inspiration than it just looks really sleek and cool it, it actually was uh doing something really neat so with that we're going to move on from this one and move to the last one Alrighty, and last but not least, we have the 8841 Personal Space Station. At least, I'm pretty sure that's what it's called. Um, so yeah, the description on this is pretty light, but as the description does imply, it's fairly self-explanatory. It's like a personal space station. Now, in the comments, um, it was suggested that it looked kind of like a space apartment building type of thing, which that seemed to be the general idea. Uh, and overall, I think it's a really, really cool concept. It is a really neat idea and a way of doing things. Rather than building just a standard space station, it's actually got a bit more of, um, like an apartment complex kind of feeling. So, I don't know where the air quote primary door is, but I'm kind of assuming this would be kind of like a garage door for a house. This... Do I have my lights on? I do. Let's turn those off for just a second. This is a really cool idea that I'm seeing more often, but never done quite like this, uh, where the use of LCD screens as these kind of like subtle but wider uh, types of lights. When you, when you really make the interior lights bright, sometimes they can be very overbearing, and there's a lot of like glare to them, and using the LCD screens is not... Uh, quite as big of a deal in terms of drawing your eye up to where the lights are coming from. So that's a really cool technique that I've seen used a lot more frequently lately. Um, so I'm guessing that's the garage door or gate. It says gate. I was thinking garage door, but I guess it's a gate. All right. So I think this is going to be kind of... I think that's the main entry type thing. I didn't see any other real door type areas. So we've got a couple cryo chambers, a medical bay. Um, I'm not sure where that's going to go. We'll work our way down, but for now let's check out up here. Again, we're seeing a lot of these LCD lights, which is cool, and it's very effective in here. Um, we've got, oh, this is like a patio type thing, like an outdoor, outdoor grill and bar type area with some lounge chairs and or diving boards. I think those are lounge chairs or lounge beds or something. We've got a pool or, or hot tub type of thing. Really cool. I like it. I didn't realize what it was at first, but I like it. Um, what goes up here? This is really cool though. Uh, this is yet another example of a build that uses the hybrid grid style system and does a lot of detail with the small ship grid. Now, where is the rotor? I always kind of hunt for the rotors um, when I see this because I know they're around here somewhere. And actually, there's quite a bit of detail work done, um, like using these blast door blocks and stuff to do a decorative color pattern or these copper colored vertical stack kind of things. I'm not sure if they're supposed to be like a shelf or a wall or what, but it, it just adds a lot more 
uh, detail type stuff to things, which is pretty cool. I cannot find the rotor though. Oh, there it is. Right there. Okay, cool. Um, and it looks like this is still part of the main grid and then we're moving to this blast door type shape here to connect the two, which is cool. Um, oh, that's a cool way to do a couch. Oh, that's neat. So you've got a three block along with a curved edge and then uh, same thing on the bottom, but then you do a curved on the back to give it that, uh, or couch or, or big chair, could be a big chair. Um, so we got the rotor type set, or not rotor, the uh, stairway set up here, which I'm actually surprised you can walk up without jumping or anything. It's a little stuttery, but it does work. Um, I don't know what this is, but it looks cool. Empty, 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 empty. Um, yeah, I have no idea what this is for other than maybe finding mutants, because it kind of looks like Cerebro, but... It looks awesome. I would be a happy camper if somebody told me this is a gaming setup for your outdoor gaming needs and it's like surround sound type thing. That's what I'm kind of thinking. If so, that's amazing. All right, so now let's head down this way. See what else we can get into here. We've got kind of an overhanging look with glass. That's interesting, so I can't really get out there at the moment. Don't know what's out there. Um, so we have a bathroom, looks like. Wow, this is actually really well done. I like this. So here's one of those we've seen it often. Well, not often, but we've seen the last couple episodes is this uh, 3x3 surrounded by a 5x5 of blast door blocks in order to create a flush but small grid connected area. I like the LCD screen with the interior light as a mirror light. That's really cool with the sink. Very nicely done. And then it kind of comes off here to make the toilet area with the... Oh! Hold up. How are they doing this? Nope. Can't seem to stay on the toilet. Alright, so... Oh, now that's tricky. So we have a slope block, two ramp nose, ramp tips or noses, depending on how you want to call it, and then a half slope in the back to make a corner. That's a really interesting idea. Very, very cool. Uh, and then we have like the shower area, which works. All right, so that's, uh, let's say that's the guest bath, I guess. Whoa. Okay, I just went, uh, not sure what ha what happened there, but I guess now we're in the maintenance area. Oh, it's a gravity walk. Okay, I just did that wrong, apparently, and pulled away from the gravity, and then I fell. Okay, so it's a gravity walk. Gotcha. So I'm guessing this is kind of the maintenance area, because it's all exposed out here. And it's like catwalks and all of your batteries and oxygen stuff and whatnot. I feel like I'm going in circles. Probably because I'm going in circles. Um, so it's a bit more of the guts of the, of the build, you might say. Still really cool, though. Very interesting how it's all laid out. Definitely feels like a maintenance area where it's all kind of a function over form design. So pretty cool. I like it trying to find a way to go further down. Oh, there it is. Couldn't find the stairway. Uh, we've got programmable blocks, storage containers, batteries, jump drives. Uh, there are thrusters on the outside of the ship, so apparently it can be moved. And with the jump drives, you could warp somewhere you wanted to go. Um, welder 2, piston 3. Oh! Oh, no, that was weird. I saw something moving and I thought it was a elevator like this. And then I was like, wait, this whole thing's going up. That doesn't make sense. Okay, so there's like a repair crane, you might say. Alright, so let's find our way back up. That's even doable. I get so lost in these areas. 
particularly when it's done like this where it's more um, everything's kind of one color and um, and it's all kind of laid out very industrial like it makes it hard for me to figure out where I am more of this kind of layout really cool design I really like this I really 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 do um, I hope to see more of these kinds of designs because honestly this is still kind of makeshift compared to oh that's interesting oh corner LCDs I was gonna say that's not what the corner lights look like anymore but this kind of interior design is still kind of makeshift compared to something like Imperion that has interior blocks but I have to say that um, it really works really well like it does allow builders to add quite a bit more detail without uh, re resorting to mods so I, I do think that these are techniques that uh, it's kind of what the inspiration series was, was about was to help people that couldn't figure out how to do uh, certain kinds of builds and things I definitely think these kinds of techniques would help if you're looking to add some uh, design flair to your interiors and such so very very cool uh, this looks like some kind of workshop or or quarters because I mean this kind of looks like a bed and you've got a TV but then this is like a desk and this is like I'm, or a table so maybe a maybe a quarters this could be like a dining table I suppose and then this could just be your desk I've seen some of that design in um, like maintenance workshop areas and stuff sometimes so I tend to default to seeing them as a workshop. Uh, definitely an entertainment room up here. We've got a loft with a couch and a TV. Treadmill. Okay, that's slick. That's cool. I've never seen that one before. So we've got blast door blocks in the middle with the ramps on the edge to give the rounded curve look. A um, couple of angle blocks. A couple of sensors that are incomplete to give it the look like wheels. Or not wheels. Um, spindle type things. And then half blocks to give it like the controls and then you got screen readouts here that's pretty cool I've never seen that one before that's neat uh, blast door block desk which is pretty cool I like it um, I like these kind of like uh, pillar shaped things too they add a nice little decorative flair I'm very impressed with the blast door block floor and color palette type thing to add some detail to the floor you've got these cool stripes and border areas and even this stuff where you just have color patches in the middle to add like area rug kind of looks really really cool uh, a couple of ion thrusters there to look like a stove I think I think that's what that's supposed to be then I'm not sure if these are then stoves or like hot plates or what but clearly a kitchen area and what I'm guessing is like a dining room area with a, either a mirror or because it doesn't look like it's supposed to be a TV. So maybe a mirror, like a dining room table. Not really sure on that one, but that's what I'm going to go with. I really like the treadmill. That's actually really cool. Um, so at the risk of missing something, it looks like I've reached the end of the interior here. I think. I don't see any other ways to find anything. So I'm gonna say that that's the interior that we can look at. I think, maybe. If there are other areas, I didn't see a path to get there. So I'm assuming that we've seen everything we can see. There's also merge blocks and connectors on the outside uh, for I'm assuming docking with other ships and things. Um, laser antenna on the bottom. Again, there's thrusters and other stuff to allow the ship to move. There's collectors on the outside here. But yeah, I think that's overall... I think that's the... Uh, is this open? Oh, so this could be another way to get in. That could be a maintenance access area. So yeah, overall, I think that's going to do it for this build and this episode. So with that, I think we're going to wrap things up here. I hope you all enjoyed. If you did, leave a like, and I will see you all next time. Peace.